Hi guys, today we're going to talk about quadratic systems again, but instead of the previous notes where we solved by graphing, today we're going to solve systems with quadratics in them by substitution and by elimination. So that's our essential question. How do we solve quadratic systems by substitution and elimination. So, just a quick little review. Whenever you solve a system by substitution, what that means is that you're taking some variable that is already solved for and you're taking the expression that that variable equals and you're substituting it into the other equation so that you could solve for a variable. Just another reminder is that when we solve systems, the substitution and elimination methods will give us a variable, but the solutions are actually an ordered pair. So once you get one variable's value, you need to plug it back in to get the other variable's value. So in the first example, we have y equals x squared minus x minus 6. That's a quadratic because of that squared. And then we also have y equals 2x minus 2. That's a linear equation because there is no squared. We just have an x here. This is almost in the form y equals mx plus b. So if you remember when you solve with substitution, you want to make sure that you have at least one variable solved for. And here we have both equations solved for y. So I'm going to take what y equals, and since y equals 2x minus 2, I'm going to substitute 2x minus 2 for y. So here, instead of y equals, I now have 2x minus 2 equals, and then I have the right side of my first equation, x squared minus x minus 6. Now, I notice that x squared is positive where it is, so what I'd like to do, since this is a quadratic, is I'd like to move everything in my equation over to the side with the positive x squared. So that means I'm going to move this minus 2 over. By doing the inverse operation, I'm going to add 2. And I'm also going to move this positive 2x over by doing the inver inverse operation. And I'm going to subtract 2x. So now on the left side, I'll have 0. On the right side, x squared remains the same. Nothing was combined with it. But if you have negative x's and you subtract two more x's, you end up with negative three x's. And if you have negative six but you add two, you end up with negative four. So we have a quadratic. We have the quadratic in standard form. Instead of equaling y, it equals zero, which is great. That means that we now need to factor. So I'm going to find my magic numbers that multiply to give me one times negative four. And they need to add to give me negative 3. So when I think about numbers that do that, 2 times 2 is 4. That's not going to give me negative 3 in any combination. But 1 times 4 will give me 4. And I need it to be negative 4. So I need one of these to be negative. If the sum is negative, that means that the bigger number must be the negative number, because there will be more negatives left over. So my factors are x plus 1 and x minus 4. And here, remember that if you're going to solve, you need to set each factor equal to 0 so that you can get your answer. So x minus 4 equals 0. If I add 4 to both sides, x equals 4. Also keep in mind that the factors and their solutions are opposites. So negative 4, positive 4. But now the trick is, because I have my solutions here to the quadratic, I now need to figure out the actual points of intersection. So I need the y values along with these x values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute my x values back into either equation. And it would probably be better to use this equation. So we have y equals 2 times x, so 2 times negative 1 minus 2. 
2 times negative 1 is a negative 2, and negative 2 minus 2 more is negative 4. So we have negative 1 comma negative 4 as one of our solutions. So now what I'd like for you to do is I'd like for you to pause your video and try to find the other solution. I know the x value is 4, but try to plug in 4 and get the y value. Pause your video and try it out. So hopefully you paused your video and you were able to uh, come back on and see work on my paper that was repeated on your paper. There are two solutions to this system. The solutions are at negative 1 comma negative 4 and 4 comma 6. So that means my parabola and my line intersect at two different places. Let's go to the next problem. Next problem, solve by substitution. Both equations are already solved for y, so I'm going to take what y equals in one of them, and I'm going to substitute it for y in the other equation. So instead of y equals, I have x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals negative 2 times x minus 2 squared plus 3. So this one looks a little different, a little crazy. I notice that we've got x squareds in both of them, so that means there are two parabolas here. I do need to kind of expand this right here because I can't really do anything until these parentheses are gone. So I'm going to rewrite my left side. Nothing changes here. But this, change colors here. x minus 2 squared is x minus 2 times x minus 2. So when you FOIL this, x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. Negative 2 times x is another negative 2x. And negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So this is x squared minus 4x plus 4. And I need to distribute my minus 2, my negative 2, to each of these. So negative 2 times x squared is negative 2x squared. Negative 2 times negative 4x is plus 8x. And negative 2 times 4 is minus 8. So make sure that you have everything look in the way that it's supposed to. We should combine these two constants. So negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5. So I'm going to go ahead and make this minus 5. And again, I want to make sure that everything is on one side of the equal sign. And I want to make sure that the x squared term is positive. So here it's positive, here it's a negative. That means that everything needs to move to this side of the equation. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, add 2x squared, add 2x squared, that's 3x squared. I'm going to move this by subtracting 8x, subtracting 8x, 4x minus 8x is minus 4x, and I'm going to add 5, add 5, so this is plus 9. Okay. Now I paused for a while because I noticed that what I have right here doesn't match what I have on my key. So I went back and I scanned my work and I noticed that I have an issue here. So my issue here is that this x plus 2 in parentheses I copied down wrong. And if you saw that and you were trying to say, Ms. Belzik, you did it wrong, what are you doing? And I obviously could not hear you. But yeah, that's incorrect. So really, let's go through and let's make these changes. 
all my signs are going to change to positive. 2x plus 2x is plus 4x. That plus 4x is here as well. Negative 2 times 4x is negative 8x. So I'm going to make this negative 8x. To undo minus 8x, I need to add 8x. And 4x plus 8x is not negative 4x, it's positive 12x. So now, 3, 12, and 9 are all divisible by 3, so I'm going to take out my GCF. And I'd like for you to pause your video and see if you can finish factoring and get the x values for your solutions. So as you factor, you should find that the x values are negative 1 and negative 3. But each of those we need to substitute into an equation so that we can get the y values that go along with them. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute them into this second equation here. y equals negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1, that's negative 4, plus 4. These two cancel out, and negative 1 squared is 1. So this ordered pair is negative 1, comma, 1. Here, y equals negative 3 squared. Uh, negative, oh, sorry, 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, and then plus 4. We have y equals 9 minus 12, which is negative 3, plus 4, that's 1. So this ordered pair is negative 3, comma, 1. So my solutions, my two places where the parabolas are overlapping and intersecting are at the ordered pair negative 1, comma, 1 and negative 3, comma, 1. All right. So the last page of our notes today, um, the first couple pages we had two substitution examples, but the last page we have two elimination examples. And so I just want to briefly go over elimination with you um, like we had in the past with our systems of equations that were all linear. And so in the past, past, uh, we had situations where maybe we had y plus 3x equals 5 and 2y minus 3x equals 4 or something like that. And the way we eliminated is we made sure that we had all of our terms lined up along with our equal signs. And we wanted one type of term to have the same number but opposite signs. These were called negative reciprocals or opposite reciprocals. And we were able to combine everything and eliminate those negative reciprocal terms. So 1y plus 2y, big plus sign. 1y plus 2y is 3y's. 3x minus 3x is nothing and 5 plus 4 is 9. And then we had a nice simple equation to solve for y, and we could substitute and get the x value. So this was in the past. And we're going to do the same thing now, but now we have the added complication of the x squared. And so one of the hints that I want to encourage you to use is to make sure that your equations are solved for y, just like the last set of notes when we were graphing. Make sure your equations are solved for y, and that way you can eliminate y whenever you combine your equations. So look at this first equation. We have negative x plus y equals negative 4. If I solve for y, I'm going to move this x over. I have y equals x minus 4. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my y equals x squared minus 4x plus 2, and I'm also going to line up this, y equals x, not x squared, but x, minus 4. Notice how I left a big space right here where the x squared is, because I don't have any x squared terms, so it's kind of like 0x squared. Now what I'm going to do for elimination is I'm going to subtract this whole equation from the top. So it's kind of like having a subtraction sign here. 
because I'll end up, I'm just rewriting for the sake of my notes, I'll end up with negative y, negative 0x squared, which really doesn't mean anything, negative 1x, and plus 4. So I have y minus y, that's 0. I have x squared minus 0x squared, that's still x squared. I have negative 4x minus 1x, so minus 5x. And I have 2 plus 4, that's 6. This looks like something that we could definitely solve. And I could solve using my magic numbers. I need two numbers that multiply to be 6 and they need to add to be negative 5. So when I think about that, negative 2 and negative 3 will do the trick. 0 equals x minus 2 times x minus 3. Remember that your solutions to a quadratic are the opposites of the factors. So x equals positive 2 and x equals positive 3. Now you have a choice. You can either put each one of these x values into the first equation, the second equation, or kind of the modified first equation. And I'm going to choose to do the modified first equation because I think that looks easier. So I have y equals 2 minus 4. So that's a negative 2. And that's a solution of 2 comma negative 2. And for my other x value, I have y equals x minus 4, that's 3 minus 4, and 3 minus 4 is negative 1. So my other solution is 3 comma negative 1. Okay, so we made sure that both equations were solved for y. We gave one of the equations a negative sign, so we changed all of the signs, and then we did elimination. Elimination did require, though, some factoring to get our solutions. So let's try our last problem today. And if you'd like, you can pause your video, and you can try it out, and you can check back periodically to see if you've made progress in the right direction without mistakes. So. I notice that these are already solved for y. I'm going to go ahead and give a negative sign to maybe the bottom one. So we'll make this negative. We'll make this negative. This is already negative. We'll make it positive. This is positive. We'll make it negative. Okay. Add up my like terms because everything is on top of its respective terms. So y plus negative y is 0. 2x squared plus negative x squared is 1x squared. x plus 3x is 4x. 7 plus negative 4 is 3. I can use magic numbers to find two numbers that multiply to be 3 but add to be 4. Well, that's easy. 3 and 1 will do the trick. So x plus 3 and x plus 1 are my factors. If my factors are x plus 3 and x plus 1, then the x values that go with them are negative 3 and negative 1. Remember, that comes from setting each factor equal to 0 and solving the little miniature equation. And finally, I want to find the y values with these, so I'm going to go ahead and substitute my x values into one of the equations. It doesn't matter which one. So I'm going to go ahead and use maybe the top one. So y equals 2 times x squared plus x plus 7. You could use a calculator here if you wanted. Negative 3 squared is 9. 2 times 9 is 18. Minus 3 plus 7. 
18 minus 3 is 15, plus 7 is, ooh, did I do that right? Yes, 22. So one of the ordered pairs is negative 3, comma, 22. The other ordered pair comes from substituting negative 1 in place of x, so y equals 2 times the negative 1 squared plus negative 1 plus 7. Negative 1 squared is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Minus 1 plus 7. 2 minus 1 is 1 plus 7 is 8. So my second ordered pair is negative 1 comma 8. And those are my two solutions to this system of quadratic equations.